All right, now we are going to move into solving one variable inequalities using algebra. We just learned how to do it graphically. Um, now we're going to learn it algebraically and using tables. So um, the next two examples, let's make sure I get this right. Yep, a table we graphically. Cool. Okay. So to solve the equation, so before we found like graphically what the solutions are, now we're going to solve things with two variables a little bit better. I'm sorry, one variable a little bit better. Rewind, reset, we're good. All right, so these are all set equal to zero. Um, we're going to solve them using tables, graphs, or algebraic methods. All right, so let's first figure out how to do this using a table. Make sure I've got my pen on. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is rewrite it in standard form. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I have x squared plus x minus 6 is less than or equal to 0. Um, now I'm going to make a table of values. If you remember when we first started this chapter, we learned how to graph things by a table of values. Not the most efficient, but it's okay. I'm going to have our input and our output. Let's just pick some values. Um, I don't know, let's do... So I went all the negative ones, now all the positive ones. And go ahead and plug them in. What's really cool is, if you listen, if you've got your graphing calculator out, I'm going to show you a little trick of how to do this quickly. I know you guys can do this math. This isn't difficult math, but as things get more difficult, you can learn a trick. So I've got my calculator open and I'm going to type in x squared plus x minus 6. Type that in again. x squared plus x, sorry, <laughs> plus x. Having some difficulties here. Um, and if you hit enter at this point, you're going to get an answer, but that answer doesn't mean anything because your calculator has something stored for the value of x into its memory. We have to change that. So first I'm going to type in negative 4 and I'm going to hit the store button, S-T-O with an arrow. So I've just got negative 4, store, and I'm going to store it into the x. So I just made the calculator think that negative 4 um, is now x, and it just outputted it. Now if I go up, this is sort of hard to do backwards, if I go up and grab this equation, it's going to calculate it again with negative 4 in for x, and I get an answer. So my output is 6. Now I can do negative 3 store for x. Go up and grab that equation again. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll see there. Okay. As things get more difficult, um, negative 2, store for x, hit enter, grab that equation, hit enter. Just a little shortcut I like to use. Zero I'm not going to type in. Hmm. We think zero would be also negative six. Yep. I think we found our axis of symmetry in between the negative one and zero. If I keep going. Those are all the values I get. So notice that x squared minus x squared plus x minus 6 is less than or equal to 0 when the values of x are between negative 3 and 2. So when is this true? x squared plus x minus 6 is less than 0. Um, it's true here. It's true here. It's true there. It's true there. So those are all the places that it's true. Oh, less than or equal to. So it can be equal to also. That is where it's true. So I know my answer is going to be negative 3 
less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2. That is the answer to that inequality. So this definitely got just a tad bit more complicated, but not terrible. We can also graph to solve inequalities. Another way to solve this is to first graph the related function um, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Then, because the inequality symbol is less than, identify the x values for which the graph lies below the x-axis. You can use similar procedure to solve quadratic inequalities for less than equal to, greater than, or greater than equal to. So let's practice one. Okay, first I'm going to graph this. Um, let's see if I can do a times c is negative 8. So a times c is negative 8, and b is 1. So 8 is 1 times 8, 2 times 4. I don't think I'm ever going to get to 1. 4 times 2, nope. So that doesn't work. That was my dog. Um, let's go ahead and do the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. It's a plus. 1 plus 32 all over 4. Negative 1 plus root 33 divide by 4. That's kind of icky. We're going to three decimal places because that's what you'll have to do in calculus. Minus root 33 divide by 4. Okay, those are my two solutions. Those are really icky though, but it's fine. So if I were to graph that, I'm going to do the positive 1 point something something and the negative 1 point something something. This thing opens up, so I know my graph is going to look basically like that. It does not have to be a very detailed graph for what we're doing. Um, and we know that when it's in this form, arrows pointing towards the zero. Okay. Um, because the inequality is, nope. I'm just going back to read that paragraph. I have the hardest time erasing. Okay, so because that is our inequality, we can say that the graph lies on or above the x-axis to the left of and including x equals, it's greater than or equal to. So all of those values and all of those values. So the graph lies on or above the x-axis to the left of and including x equals negative 1.69 and to the right of and including x equals 1.19. So to write our solution we would say negative 1 point, sorry, x is less than or equal to negative 1.686 or x is greater than or equal to 1.186. Okay, I would just do a test point. If I tested negative 2, I would have 2 times negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 4. This would be 8 um, plus 8 minus 4. Is that greater than or equal to 0? Yes. Okay, so I tested it, so I would shade to this side. I could test a positive 2 and shade to that side, okay? Just a little bit easier to figure out than um, which way is it written, is my standard form, do I have the 0 to the left, 0 to the right, etc. Okay? 
and another page. Graphically, this is what we would do, okay, for them drawing it. And we could also draw it in Desmos, okay? All right, so solve the inequality using a table and using a graph. So let's go ahead and put it in standard form. Sorry, if we go up to this example, yep, so our equation and then the zero. Oh, there we are. Standard form would be 2x squared plus 2x minus 3, because I subtracted 3 from both sides. So our table would be an x and then the equation. Not sure where to start testing, so I'm going to start at negative 5. Probably going to run out of room. Okay, I'm going to calculate these. I'm going to push pause and calculate them so you don't have to watch me do that math. Um, and then I'll come back and discuss it. Oh, can I not push pause when I use this? There we go. I think we're recording again. So I did the table. If you look, um, I started at negative 5. That was way too low. Once I got to the middle and went back down, I actually don't have to finish. I can stop. Um, now we're trying to figure out where this equation, sorry, this um, expression is less than or equal to zero. We actually never get the zero, so we know the solution is in here somewhere. It's somewhere between negative three and one, and negative three and one, um, because I can't get to zero. It's the tabular method doesn't work for this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let me write. We're going to graph this one in Desmos, just so we can do something a little bit quicker. I'm going to do 2x squared plus 2x um, minus 3. Okay, there we are. And um, I see the point. See, those are decimals. I would have never found that. And it's okay. Um, it doesn't hurt to try. So I can't write on this, but I'm going to go ahead and test. Let's just test a negative 2 and a positive 2 to make sure I'm shading it the same way. All right? So I'm going back here. Negative 2 and positive 2 is what I'm going to test. Negative 2 and positive 2. So if I type in negative 2, my answer is 1. Is 1 less than, sorry, is 1 less than or equal to 0? No. Um, and then I type in a 2, the answer is 9. Is 9 less than or equal to 0? No. So if I go back here, I actually want to shade in between because this was a false and that was a false. So if I shade in between, those will, those will both be um, trues. And that's where my answer is going to be. So my answer would be from negative 1.8 to x to 0 0.82. I think that's what Desmos said. And everything in between. All right? A little icky. And then example six. So we have two more examples, six and seven, before we're done in the second part of lesson nine. Um, using a quadratic inequality as a model. The number T of teams that have participated in a robot building competition for high school students can be modeled by that really awesome equation, where X is the number of years since 1992. So when X equals one, that's 1993. X equals two, that's 1994. For what years was the number of teams greater than 100? So I'm actually going to type that into Desmos. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to type that into Desmos. I think I've got it in front of me. 7.51x squared minus 16.4 x plus 
my children are making awful noises. I don't know the um, x and y axis for this one. So let's just zoom out a little bit. 7.51x squared minus 16.4x plus 35 between 0 and 9. I do want that. The x-axis has to be between 0 and 9. That's a little bit better. Okay, I know the y-intercept is going to be 35 because it's right there. Um, it dips down and then, ba then back up. All right, so we still want to find the values of x for which, hmm, we'll just come back and forth. We're actually right here now. Um, we still want to find the values of x for which our function is greater than 100 because we want the number of teams greater than 100. So let's go back over to Desmos, and I'm going to say is greater than 100. That's awful. If I subtract 100 from both sides, 70, 90, 100, yep, 65, 0, same thing. So that's a really interesting graph, but it shows us that any numbers bigger than 4.23 um, will make that a true equation. So any x values greater than 4.23, and this is the number of teams. I can't have part of a team, so any teams greater than 4 will give us that solution. So we see that right there. Um, so when your teams, sorry, when your teams are greater than 4.23, we'll get that solution. So we can say that 4.23 between 4.23 and 9 will give us um, the correct range of teams to make that real life situation true. There were more than 100 teams participating in the years, so X is the years. Oh, that's that's years, not teams. Sorry. Um, this is not true. So when X is greater than 4.23, our teams will be more than 100. And then we still need X to be smaller than or equal to 9 for our teams to be greater than 100. Okay? My bad. So that's the range for years because X is in the number of years. And it was since 1992. So 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. So 1996 isn't enough. We need one more than that because we can't have party year. So 1997 to um, 92 plus 9, 2001. All right, now solving algebraically. Um, I prefer solving algebraically. Not a big fan of tables, not a huge fan of graphs. I prefer to solve algebraically. So um, to solve this algebraically, first we're gonna write and solve the equation replacing the greater, greater, the, greater sign with an equal sign. So first we're gonna rewrite it as an equality, not an inequality. So if I subtract 15 from both sides, see if I can find two things that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. Um, 3 times 5 works. And if I make the 5 negative, if I add those, I'll get negative 2. So x plus 3, x minus 5. That means the two zeros are negative 3 and 5. Now, if you take a number line, don't worry, this isn't that bad. If you take a number line and put in the negative 3, and you don't have to put in all the numbers, um, etc. 
5. 6, negative 1, I always throw in the 0. Now we just need to test the left and the right of this number line just to figure out which way to shade it. So I know I have an open dot at 3 and an open dot at 5. I just don't know if I want to include the smaller ones, the ones in between, or the bigger ones. Okay, so let's go ahead and test negative 1. If I test a negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1 squared. Negative 2 times negative 1. Is that greater than 15? No. So you don't want to test there. So I don't want to. I don't want to shade on that side of it. Let's go ahead and test 0. Um, if I plug in 0, is 0 greater than 15? No. So I don't want to shade there. So I believe I may have made a mistake. Oh, haha. <laughs> um, negative 1 is not over here. That would be a negative 4. Oh my word. Okay, that's awesome. Let's try negative 4 and in a different color. So negative 4 squared. Oh, I thought I picked a different color. It's the second time that happened. Negative 4 squared is 16 plus 8. Is that greater than 15? Yes. So we want negative 4 and everything smaller to be included in the um, in the answer. I tested 0, it didn't work, so I know if I test a 6 it's going to work. Um, 6 squared minus 2 times 6, that's 36 minus 12, that is greater than 15. So that's our answer on the number line and to write it I would say negative 3 smaller than x smaller than 5. Nope doing fantastic. This is a lesson that I should just start over and I want all of my x's to be less than negative 3 or all of my x's to be greater than 5. I didn't even look at the book to see if I was doing it right or not. I caught that straight away. Yep, x is smaller than negative 3 or x is bigger than 5. Let's try another one in our um, guided practice. Okay, let's do number seven. We're going to solve that algebraically, and I believe that it would be a mistake. Yeah, this should be greater than four. All right, so first let's make it an, in, an equality and um, solve it. So 2x squared, so I'm not doing this one, um, minus 7x, I'm going to subtract four from both sides, equals zero. Um, can't do anything. I can't factor out a 2, so let's do a times c is negative 8, and b is negative 7. So that'd be 1 times 8, making that negative. Let's go ahead and factor by grouping plus 1x minus 8x minus 4. Group the first two, group the last two. I'm going to factor out an x. 2x plus 1 and factor out a uh, negative 4. 2x plus 1 equals 0. That gives me 2x plus 1 and x minus 4 equals 0. So if I make my number line, well, if I take each one of these binomials and solve it, x equals negative 1 half or x equals 4. Let's make our number line. This time we're going to make the number line correctly because I have confidence in myself and I make mistakes and it's okay. Um, negative 1, negative 2. Uh, I need an open dot at negative 1 half. 1, 2, 3, 4. You do not have to put all the lines. First, I'm going to test 0 because it's easiest. Let's change colors to make sure I know what I'm doing. I'm going to come back here and test x equals 0. Um, the left side of the inequality is going to be 0. And I say, is 0 greater than 4? No. So we don't want to include the middle. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to shade out of the circle. I forgot to draw this one. 
So let's go ahead and test a negative 1. 2 times negative 1 squared minus 7 times negative 1 greater than 4. That's positive 2 plus 7 is greater than 4. So I'm definitely shading this way. And I believe I'll be shading if I test my 5. 2 times 5 squared minus 7 times 5. That would be 25 times 2 is 50 minus 35 is greater than 4. So I'm shading this way. Therefore, my answer is going to be x are all numbers less than negative 1 half or x all numbers greater than 4. Whew. Good job today. Way to persevere and not give up. Partially talking to myself, too. All right, I'm logging off. I'll see you guys later.